seen anything like that. Wide right. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. The band is out on the field. He's going to go in the end zone. He's going to go in the end zone. The band has won. The band has won. Oh, my God. The Davy Mac Sports Program, where we talk the sports and other stuff like uh, the Lion King. I've never seen it. It's always the Lion King this, Lion King that. Well, I got two things to say. One, I don't like watching movies about animals. Two, I'd rather spend my time fapping to Bambi. I'm Roy Harder, and here's your host, Mr. Eastside, David McDonald, baby. Okay, thank you very, very much, Roy, for... uh... (laughs) Not really uh, an introduction, much more of a confession. You prefer, yeah, you you, you prefer Roy. You prefer fapping to what? To to Bambi. Fapping to Bambi. But you just said you uh, don't like watching movies with animals. So then why would you fap to a movie about an animal? It's a good good question. Why did you change the goddamn fucking introduction that I fucking wrote for you, which said fapping the porn, which makes goddamn sense? Because I don't watch porn. I know, but you understand that I fucking have to write your introductions. Don't change a goddamn word, you son of a fucking bitch. I wrote you a beautiful introduction about fapping the porn, and you changed the introduction when you just said you don't watch animal movies, and then you fucking say you fapped the Bambi. Last time I checked, Bambi's a goddamn fucking beer, a deer. So next thing you know, you don't watch fucking animal movies. You do watch animal movies, and you jerk off to them. Which one is it? How about this? Keep the goddamn introductions fucking word by word as written by the Dave man or else write your own goddamn introductions, you piece of shit. Good point, Thumper. <laughs> All right, but I love you, Roy. Roy Harder, too, buddy. you look as handsome as ever. Don Johnson is saying, man, Miami, my Miami Vice look, it has finally been passed down. And you yeah. and Don Johnson, almost the same age, both 78 years old. Yeah, that's right. I got my white pants on and everything. Baby. Yeah, you look great. But Roy, it's not just about you, although you're going to be integral in the show tonight. It's not just about Robert, by the way. This is uh, getting uh, directed by Robert. But it's about our special guest star who I wanted to talk New York football giants with. But on top of that, he is going to debut his first ever stand-up comedy set. This is a big time appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, the great one, Daniel Bobo Curlin. Yeah. Oh, talk to me, baby. I'm here, here from the CB Lou Studios. And I have to say it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful set. Went over quite well. And a big thanks to Stevie Lou for for putting together that show and for booking for me booking me for that show. Wonderful. And um, would you like to say Stevie Lou again? You've mentioned him twice in the first eight seconds. Well, no, well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm having fun with you. You say Stevie Lou uh, um, Studios. You're talking about his apartment because guess what? I guess uh, I should be calling this the goddamn fucking Davy Mac fucking studios over here then. If we're doing that. If everybody's got their own fucking studios name. Is Stevie there? We love Stevie. Can we say hello to him for uh, very briefly? Sure, sure. He's, he's, he's here. And He's then this is going to be a very Bobo-centrist uh, interview. Oh, hey, guys. How's it going? How Stevie, are you? Stevie, Bobo, you booked him for the comedy, uh, your comedy show. Yeah, Bobo's over here at Stevie Lou Studios. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he was on the Stevie Lou comedy show uh, the other yeah, day. Uh, yeah, last night, actually. The branding. The Stevie Lou branding, for Christ's sakes. I put this guy on my various shows for 12 fucking years, and he can't ever give me a shout-out on Twitter. Or the fucking tweet that gets 9,000 likes, and every goddamn member of the fucking Eastside Dave Show audience is there. He never puts me in the original tweet. It's always three tweets later. He goes... Oh, yeah, by the way, thanks to Eastside Dave, because none of this would have been possible without him. You're goddamn fucking right. The entire comedy <laughs> show was filled with Eastside Dave Show gas members, you fucking maggots, you ingrate. 
How come you never put me, you never give me a shout out, Bo, on the initial original tweet? That's always a failure of yours. Oh, well, I did I did put in the photo when I said my little acknowledgement, I said today yesterday felt like an East Side Dave show reunion. Not in the original tweet. You did that <laughs> several tweaks down underneath the original tweet. So no one sees my fucking glorious name on the original tweet that's got the 9,000 likes. You understand my point? Yeah, I understand. It's always I mean, the additional bullshit tweet that's got two likes from it. And Roy well, Hart is one of those likers. Well, let's say I'll put you on the original tweet next time. There you go. Thanks. All right. Thanks, pal. All right, guys. I just want to say Stevie, hello and check in. Man. I love you, Dave. Here, Bobo, get back in there. Get Thank up. you, Stevie. And I love yep. Stevie Lou Studios. Looks unbelievable. Um, Roy Harder Studios, Davey Mack Studios look like shite compared to what Stevie's got going on. He's got a beautiful paint thing behind him, and he's got Bo. And Bo, we're going to discuss your comedy special, but we're going to do this towards the second half of the show. We got to we gotta start with a little football, baby. It's DMSP. It's Davey Mack Sports Program. It's all about the New York football giants, Bobo. Yep, that's right. And boy, was I excited when... After after the show after the show yesterday had ended, I noticed my alerts popped up on my phone because I have I have my alerts turned on from the Giants app. I saw we won. I may have been the loudest person in that entire bar. Oh really? What uh, what were you doing? Just yelling, screaming, and were you chanting anything? Let me give us a little uh, replicate uh, how you uh, behaved when you learned that the Giants were victorious over the Titans, twenty one twenty. All right, it's me walking out. I'm hearing the alert sound. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, baby! We won! Starting off the season right, baby! You just popped out Robert's goddamn speakers. I promised Robert he's not going to have a fucking meltdown tonight. I said, <laughs> I said the goddamn fucking Giants won the game, so he's not going to be angry. The only time he gets angry is when Mets, Giants lose and or he fucking hates Bill de Blasio, even though the guy hasn't been in the mayor in, in a year. But it, Bill de Blasio, Yankees losses and Mets losses set Bobo off. But you were set off with a victory, huh? Yep, exactly. I did was chant, set off. Uh, did you chant anything inappropriate? You say anything inappropriate? Any curse words? I, I may, I may, I may, I may have yelled out, "A oh, fuck yeah, fuck yeah!" You said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," uh, but on, but, on, but, but with a W. Whoa. I'm calling your goddamn mom. I'm calling your fucking mom and telling her what you goddamn fucking said in public. I happen to know that she raised a nice little Jewish boy, not someone who, you know, you know, you and with the beautiful Steve Bartman look that you got going on with the hat and the glasses and the headphones. You know, it's a nice kid. What's that? What are you drinking there? It's a, it's a Jack and Coke. Uh, I thought so. You're drinking alcohol and screaming fucks. I'm calling your goddamn fucking mom right fucking now. Hold on. Give me two seconds. Hey, Bo's mom? Hey, baby, I wouldn't mind licking you up and down, baby. And by the way, your boy's got a fucking potty mouth. Turn him some fucking, teach him some lessons. See you later, sweet ass. All right. <laughs> How would you feel if I was your stepdad? I'd have no problem with that. Let me ask you a question. What are you, allergic yeah. to cups and glasses? You're drinking that Jack and Coke out of a jar, for fuck's sake. What is it, jelly? What is it's that a mason fun? jar. It's what Stevie has here. Mason jar? <laughs> yeah, it's a mason jar. Listen, the only thing I know about is Anthony Mason jar, okay? <laughs> what, that what they call, it's what they call this. Well, call it. I gave a fucking beautiful Knicks reference from 1995, one, <laughs> Anthony Mason. And you just fucking went right past it as if you didn't even goddamn know who Anthony Mason was on the fucking 90, 95 Knicks. Remember? Oh, yeah, I remember an Anthony Mason. Oh, yeah, now middle you school do. Days. Now you my do. Middle, my middle school days. Look, we're off to a crazy beginning. Let's get focused on the Giants. Here's my point. Brian Dable, he's the man. We have <laughs> finally found our coach, goddammit. It's been McAdoo fucking shithole. It's been a Shermer shit fest and then a fucking Joe Judge jerk off fest. Lots of alliteration there and fests for that matter. Now we got a guy in Brian Dable. He's big, he's fat, 
he can coach, Daddy. Okay, this guy going for two at the end. Okay, Giants down 2013 late in the game. Minute to play. They score the touchdown. They're down 2019. Most coaches are kicking that extra point and going to overtime. Dable says, let's win it right now. And I love the call because the Giants were on the road. I was not saying, I was not doubting the call at the time. I was saying, you know what? You're on the road. Fuck overtime. Go for the win right now. When you're at home, I believe in playing for overtime. You can kick the extra point there. You got the home fans with the overtime. But on the road, no home fans in the overtime. Go for two. He does. The refs didn't even call a Saquon Barkley face mask. I don't know if you noticed that. But nevertheless, Saquon says, fuck the face mask. I'm getting into the end zone for a two-point conversion. And then a missed field goal, a 42-yard field goal on the Titans' behalf. And what an upset victory. Giants 21, Titans 20. Bo, come on. Is Dable the future? Is Dable the man? Dable is a man. He's going to lead us to greatness. Was there more? He's going to lead us to greatness okay. and the big and the big one. It kind of like he was like C-3PO, Roy, and someone turned the off switch mid-sentence. <laughs> sometimes, well, you, well, you, sometimes you sort of talk sometimes the way you tweet. There's no periods or punctuation. So I'm not exactly sure what the hell you're talking about or when it's ending. That sentence ended faster than Saquon Barkley. You know what I'm saying, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he had a big breakout of... one run, didn't by, he? By the way, Bo, are you aware that Robert calls Saquon Barkley Saquon like he's a, a, a Native American basket? Saquon. That's what I think <laughs> of. Hey, for, hey watch it. it. It's Saquon. Hey, Bo. That's it, Bo. Hey, Bo. I went to college with him. I think I'd know a little bit better than you, buddy. Oh, bro! He went to Penn State with the guy. Did you, you didn't even know that? Penn State can fuck You went to Penn State. Penn State can fuck herself. All right. Now, first of all, I have That's to hear definitely... Stevie give you that fucking line. This ain't Steve Martin and Roxanne. No giving Bo lines. Bo is the guest. He needs to think for himself. So we ain't doing a fucking Roxanne scenario. The best part oh. was that definitely wasn't the line Stevie gave him either. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, Stevie, what was the line that you tried to give Bo? Uh, that, 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 that Penn State's a bunch of kid fuckers. Bo, <laughs> Penn State's a bunch of kid fuckers. What, you didn't want to go there with the Sandusky and the Paterno? I, I, I didn't hear the line right because I had the yeah, headphones yeah. on. You and Roy. You guys could, uh, could fancy yourselves the greatest two uh, improv comics of all time. You just change. You cha gold is given to you, and you say, how can I change this to shit? Yeah, how can we make brass out of this gold? Yeah. How can I take something that the guy did for me and start changing it to make it worse instantly? <laughs> like, I don't watch animal movies, but I'm going to reference Bambi. <laughs> I love you, Roy. I love you so much. I love the fact that Bo's drinking. Lately, everyone's been drinking who's coming on the show. I Flutie, know. Flutie was fucking wrecked. Because yeah. I've told you, one, two max IPAs. And it's like the fucking woman got ran over by the Jack Daniels truck. Yeah. And then Bo's yeah. got Jack and Cokes out of a goddamn Anthony Mason jar. Not even understanding <laughs> the Knicks references. Um, here's my only concern, Bo, when it comes to the Giants. Me and you were Giants heads. Okay. There was one negative thing, and let's just be honest. Is Daniel Jones the quarterback of the New York football Giants going forward? I mean, obviously he's going to finish the season out. All right. It's year five of Daniel Jones. But I want Bo to do a little Nostradamus type activity. Look into the future. Will Daniel Jones be the actual Eli Manning heir apparent? Or is this guy not going to get the job done? Because yet again, a fumble lost Daniel Jones turns it over on fumbles and has a horrendous interception at the end of the game the Giants Saquon they overcame all of it the defense everyone overcame it Dable they overcame it but the, the one glaring you know weak spot was the quarterback Daniel Jones another fucking turnover fumble and that interception was garbage Bo talk to me about Daniel Jones and what you think this year, if he doesn't turn it around by Halloween, he's toast. Toast? Wait, Halloween? So you, you, you think there's a chance Daniel Jones may not even end the season as Giants quarterback? Because I was figuring they're going to give him the whole year. 
You think he could get benched for Tyrod Taylor when Tyrod Taylor comes back to the G-Men? Is that what you're saying right here on the Davey Mech Sports Program? Yep, I'm saying that the, the the leash is very short. Could be that. Could even be could even be that. Could even be one year. But if he doesn't show the progress by Halloween, he's toast. All right. Bobo with the hard hitting. Roy wow. Harder. What do you think about uh, these comments here by Bo? Do you what do you it's, think it's of a, Daniel Jones, Roy? Well, I don't know too much about Jones, but I know that if it's out of Daniel's mouth, out of Bobo's mouth, it's the truth. So I'm going with Bobo on this one, Dave. You're going with Bo. Okay. Yeah. I think I think they're gonna let Daniel Jones finish the season, personally. Bo. I, I, I don't you know, I don't see the point. I mean, Tyrod Taylor, he's the guy's what, 32? 33. It's not like Tyrod Taylor is a 24 year old rookie is my point. Do you have any thoughts about what I'm saying there? Why, why, why go with Tyrod Taylor? If, 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 unless Daniel Jones gets hurt, you know, isn't the point of this season to actually figure out once and for all what you have in Daniel Jones. To me, you can only do that by playing him the whole season. And then if he sucks, he sucks. And you, and you get rid, dump him. Well, dep- depends how bad it is, what our record is by Halloween. Bo? Why Halloween, Bo? Yeah, why Halloween? I, I got to know. I think I, I think the season's kind of measured in quarters, and that's like sort of the first quarter of the season. Is that the truth? Bo, can... um, so all in all, you have to be thrilled with the Giants. Talk to me. Yeah, I, I am thrilled so far. I mean, we, we, we won. This team stayed in the game. And we get more importantly, we, we got to win. And the Sa- Saquon Barkley finally showed without be, what, what he can do without be, when he's not be on the injured reserve. All right. I, 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 I was told his name is now pronounced Saquon. So, so, so Saquon Birkley, can you say that, Bo, for five points? I can say that. So, so Saquon Birkley. Oh, my God, give him the five points. Well done. I didn't think you were capable of that. All right, now listen, Bo. Someone's here to talk to you. It's a special person that loves you very much, and they want to play a game with you, okay? It's like a fill-in-the-blank type of game. All right, oh, I'm going to step that? out for a second, and I'm just going to, Roy, would you mind stretching? Maybe you, you and Bo stretch You got it, brother. Bit? You got yeah, it. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Just, just stretch. Stretch for me. Please. Oh, yeah. <sighs> that was a good set last night, Bo, I really enjoyed it. That, oh, yeah, that that was such a great set. I was, I, I'm so glad to be able to perform it. I mean, Stevie Lou did a wonderful job putting together that show great. I mean, it was a great lineup of comics and, and not just myself, but everyone who performed yesterday. Oh, yeah. Can I fucking talk now? We you oh, fucking let's... talk about that? Hi, Bo! Hi, little Davey. Good to see you again. How are you doing, fuck buddy? I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing good there. I'm doing good there, you furry, furry guy. How's your ass doing, fuck pal? How's my what? Ass! Your ass! Your buttocks! Your butt! Uh, my, my ass is doing normal stuff, Take, taking big dumps after after I after I ate the Mexican food two days ago. Holy shit! I was just fucking having a little fun. Just trying to make a little conversation. I didn't actually need to know the ins and outs uh, I, I, I got a fucking digestive process, you disgusting fuck. But I got, I got, wait a minute, I think I got some cotton in my mouth from your dick. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, well, I guess we're ready to play this game then. Okay, then, little Davey. So the object of the game is pretty simple, Bo. Okay, I am going to sing you our favorite song, the best friend song, and then I'll leave in a blank. And then what you gotta do, Bo is then you have to fill in the blank. And the point is, if you get two answers correct out of five questions, you win. Nice and simple. Okay, fuck face. Okay, anything you say, little Davey. How's your ass doing, babe? 
My ass is doing nor is normal. Good. That's that was the proper response. You should have said that the first time, two and a half minutes ago, <laughs> rather than telling me how many ounces of fecal matter comes out of your disgusting little shithole. You fucking creep. Okay. Who oh, is like the guy's Chuck Berry over there, Roy, with the fucking <laughs> shit videos. <laughs> Now let's do this fucking game so I can get the shit out of here, okay? Okay. All right. Think about this and then do the goddamn song, okay? Okay. Best friends through thin and thick. Best friends will blow each other's blank. I'm going to say dicks. Candlewick. You fucking per pervert! They blow the candle with. They blow out the candle. Oh, this is gonna be a long fucking night, isn't it? And he's no selling all my goddamn comments. It's like I'm talking to a fucking wall over here. Hey, are you buffering? I'm just horny. You're what? Horny? Yeah, just horny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It might be. It might be some fapping this evening. I'm just gonna okay, say. Okay, please. <laughs> Best friends like hands on a clock. Best friends will twist each other's cock. Lock. You fucking sick fuck. Lock. Twist each other's lock like one of those locks you open up the locker at the high school. Did you graduate high school, buffering boy? Yes, I did. Bullshit! I, uh... Bull fucking shit! There's no way you've ever learned how to fucking work a combination lock in your life. Yeah, I did. I used one in high school. Bullshit. Roy, do you believe him? No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. No way. What? There's no way he could do one of those twist combination locks. Right 37, left 22, right 16. You thinking this little fucker? This little Steve Bartman impersonator can actually fucking work that? No way. You know how many UPS driver's tests he's failed? Nine. Nine times he's failed the UPS driver's test. And you're telling me he's going to be able to work a combination lock? Good Bullshit. point, Dave. Good point, little Davey. Thank you. Next one, Bo. Best friend. Like to huggy hug and kiss kiss. Best friends will drink a cup of each other's piss. Swiss miss the hot chocolate. Are you even <laughs> trying? Are you even trying to play this game on the up and up or is everything a fucking I'm six trying, six but notes? Swiss miss doesn't seem to rhyme well as piss does. I said kiss kiss. <laughs> I said kiss, kiss. That's why I wrote the lyric that way. <laughs> Next one. Best friends have better hygiene than a bum. Best friends wash to clean off sticky. Uh, gum. 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 You ever get does some gum stuck in your hair or on your shirt? It's all sticky. Yeah, gum's a little easier to remove. Now, let me ask you another question, a follow-up. How many yeah. times you get cum in your hair, you sick freak? Mm -hmm. How many times? You're the, all of a sudden, you're Mr. having to wash and shower every day to fucking clean off all the jizz. How many times have you had cum stuck in your hair? Uh, maybe, maybe 15. It's bounced off of some stuff, though. 15 times? Yeah. Okay. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> Best friends. Avoid a runaway truck. Best friends. Always find a way to. Fuck. To duck. To duck the, they were, the first line talked about a runaway truck. So the second line is like, you gotta duck it because it's running away. Got nothing to do with us having sex. Oof. I just fucking threw something. I'm so pissed <laughs> off at you. Dude. How do you I feel quack. about you? How do you feel about yourself today? Every goddamn. Sorry, let me fix my shoulder. 
Let Did you dislocate your shoulder, little Davey, when you yeah, threw I that? My, Holy I hurt cow. my shoulder. Bobo, apologize. I just have to shoulder back in. Watch. Oh! Ah! Oh, fuck. You okay. did that, Bobo. That's on you. The amount of disturbing truth bombs that Bobo has laid forth today have really fucked with my brain. And I don't know if we are best friends anymore. Best friends. Convince me, Bo. Before I get out of here, convince me I should be your best friend, baby. Oh, little, little on, baby, baby, you're... Come on, you know you know I quack when I fuck. <laughs> Can someone explain to me what the fuck he's talking about? Does anyone know? Did he just say he quacks when he fucks? Right. Yeah. What does anyone? You know what? I'm just. We're gonna sign off today. Bye, everybody. Bye, Lulu. Oh, baby. <laughs> Oh, that was some strange shit. It sure was, man. Yeah. What was the thing about the duck? You quack like a duck when you fuck? Y yeah. I think that was a video from like 2002, a viral video, right? A meme video? <laughs> All right, listen. Since we're talking about videos, the big comedy star... Now, how is this going to work, Robert? Should we? Are we going to play all five? First of all, how long is the set? I heard it's five minutes. Five minutes. Are we playing all five minutes? I think all five minutes are worth seeing. Roy, do you think five minutes? That's a big. That's a big chunk of time. But at the same time, we are premiering this yeah. uh, this comedy um, set. So, in, in in some ways, because it's a premiere, I, I'm leaning towards the five minutes as well. I think you go with the full five minutes. David, yeah, let's because, go with the full five. Yeah. Since, since it's a premiere, since it's a big deal. This is, I, yeah, this I, is huge. Okay, so I think we go with the full five as well. And um, uh, Dave, yeah. what you were saying before the show, one of the nice things about not having time constraints anymore is if we do have to go a little long, we can. You know, you don't have a show coming in after you or anything. Now that it's the East Side Dave is gone, uh, show is gone and the Davey Mac Sports Program is once again, you can do, you can go four hours if there was an emergency. I mean that this is a true. This is a good point. Are you making me fucking work overtime today? <laughs> Why do I feel like this guy set me up for working yeah, a three-hour episode I'll, tonight? I'll pay you double. <laughs> um, all right, Bobo. I'm really excited that you. Um, Bo, by the way, when did you started drinking Jack and Cokes? I've, uh, I've always, I've always had drank. I've always had Jack and Cokes from time to time. I mean, especially, I've been at bars with you. I never saw you drink Jack and Coke. Well, I always, especially I when you've you. gone big, when you've gone big moments like this, like when I just came off doing a, doing a stand up set like this, and it going so well, it went so well, had to have something worthy of the celebration. Oh, I like that. This is a very celebratory episode because uh, I mean, I'm on cloud nine with the New York Football Giants. I got to be honest. I got to be honest. I, I, I was not expecting them to win. I just wasn't, um, and, uh, and, and and plus Jack's a man's drink. <laughs> All right, let's play <laughs> Bobo. Now, where was this? What uh, what what borough of New York City was this? This was in Brooklyn Comedy Club, in the so Williamsburg Queens. area of Brooklyn. Robert, where uh, was it? He, he said the Brooklyn Comedy Club, and I said so. It was in Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but th is is he right? Was it in Brooklyn? It I is. Yeah, yeah, it was in Brooklyn. Okay, in all right. Yeah. Well, he gets confused. He may have thought it was Brooklyn, but it was actually in Queens. Um, Capacity right. crowd, too, I will say. Oh, good. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get right into it. This is Bo's stand-up material. Uh, if at any me. point you want to stop, Dave, just say stop, and I'll, I'll pause it for you if you want to do address a you know a joke or get an yeah, explanation. I so I'll Probably. be here for you. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Let's. Uh... Okay, I'll, I'll do this, Robert. I'll go like this. Stop. I'll do the with, with with the hand so you know. Okay, because without Robert? the hand, I was worried I was going to miss it. But the hand will help me. Thanks, Dave. Robert, how about this? <laughs> actually, oh, wait, baseball, baseball. Actually, Robert, I, I I won't say stop. I'll just do um signals. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and yeah. And then when it's time to go, we 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 wave you in. What's right, the good. indicator to let me know that it's the real signal though? Because they've been stealing our signs. Okay, I got you. All right, Bo, you ready? I'm ready. 
Look at this. Already off to a good start. I know it can be a depressing time for you, some, for some people. Yeah. Today, but I have to say, how many? I'm sure you've all heard of that whole that monkeypox shit going on. Well, I got something worse. I got monkey ducks. Yeah, that's right. A primate found out my address and posted it on the internet. That shit's bananas. Pause. 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 Real, real quick. That's not the sign. I, I I, I, oh yeah, I do need to know, and I don't care what the answer is. I really don't. You're getting full credit. Did Bo write these jokes? Was this Bo's jokes? Was with other people contributing? Just be honest with that. It, I have it, no it, idea. It was David. my jokes. I just kind of worked on maybe the presentation a little bit with. A, wow. With a friend. So this of, is your material. Yeah, yeah. It was my jokes. I just worked on the presentation. Excellent. With Stevie, now, with now, Stevie. Now, David, before we continue, really quick. Now, the entire front row of this uh, comedy venue, they they had no idea who Bobo was. Whereas, pretty much from the second row on, we knew exactly what they were in for, right? Now, the front row, they were kind of quiet the first couple jokes, so you'll notice that. But it only took like two or three minutes before they they flick and fell right in line and realized the goal that was uh, taking place in front of them. Oh, so this pay is, attention this is, to that. This is tremendous. I'm excited. Okay, let's go. I also would like to note, Bo has done one joke and is sipping the beer again. I love the style. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I, I, had to have a few, I had to have a beer to loosen myself up a little bit. Hey, Robert, just turn him up just a little on uh, his comedy set. Just turn the audio off just a little bit. Uh, but besides that, all right, let's hit it because this is ph phenomenal. <laughs> I work, I work for a shipping company. I can't say the name, but it rhymes with poo P.S. <laughs> at, at my job, there's a sign gauged out on the job accident. Well, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this, but I reset that counter. I, I, I shit my pants while loading a truck. <laughs> do for me get me a new fucking pair of pants uh, dave, 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 <laughs> Stevie, dave i got comments saying that the audio can go up a little bit more on bobo's set well oh. it can't because this is the highest it'll go so oh, we're okay. doing what we can unfortunately we'll do what we can it's 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 a fan video that's all we can do it's a fan video like it's one of those cell phone videos so next time i'm sure you know when bobo is uh, playing catch a rising star or the improv, or fuck it, Madison Square Garden. I'm sure we'll have HD cameras there. But for now, this was his premiere, so we can only do the cell phone footage. Go ahead. Continue. Oh, no, let's hear it for Stevie Lou. He did a wonderful He's so loud. Hey, not too loud. The guy's been smoking a lot of crack. He might get startled easily. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, oh, not that long ago, I had to get a physical. You know, they had to make sure everything was okay. My doctor was telling me I need to ease up on the trans fats. I said, hey, you're a bit homophobic. I got, it's my, it's my, it's my chips ahoy, my choice. And then I proceeded to say, black olives matter. I had one of those strange dreams last night. I'm sure you've all had that dream when you're in your high school days. Well, I had one well, I had one of those dreams about my high school days. Crazy part was I was getting straight A's and I was on the honor roll and fucking the cult, the prom queen and her friends. <laughs> that was my favorite one, no one laughed. That was my favorite joke that you did, and you got zero reaction. <laughs> I Nobody think it was. Nobody went to high school, David. <laughs> I, 
I think it was the opposite. He was doing so well, they didn't get the joke. They were like, yeah, this dude probably was getting straight A's and fucking the cheerleaders and prom queen. Yeah, that's true. Bo, you're, 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 you're an upstanding citizen now with the, you're, because of your, uh, your comedy career. You're a comedy star. Now everyone's going to look at you differently. Bo? Well, well, I'm ready to handle whatever is going to come out my way. Hold on. I got a goddamn fucking phone call. Me, me, me right, and my mind. mom not that long ago were watching TV, and there was this commercial for life insurance featuring uh, Joe Namath. You guys all know about Broadway Joe, football player. Yeah. Well, I have to say, man, I feel like times have fallen tough on this guy. I mean, you go from having every woman in America wanting to suck your dick. <laughs> To having dentures and doing commercials for old people products? <laughs> is that the whole joke? Yeah. That, was fair. That, was, that was an observation of Joe Namath. There was no actual joke. I'm not. Anyway, I liked it. I'm laughing. All right, continue. But, but I, I have to say, time, times have really changed in this city since most of my life growing up here. I used, to, I used to be afraid of falling asleep on the train and missing my stop. Now I'm afraid of falling asleep on a, on a train and getting getting mugged and groped. But hey, at least it costs 275 to get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, bro. At this point, he had won over the entire front row. I mean, that, that, that was an actual joke. The Joe Namath thing was craziness. The Joe Namath thing is probably going to, you know, put you in trouble with the NYPD who now is going to feel like they have to protect Joe Namath from, you know, some sort of a Mark David Chapman scenario where you're going no, to be talking Joe was... Namath and you're going to shoot him on the fucking streets of Manhattan. No, no, that was more, that was more of a joke of me from, from when I was looking at the commercial and I'm just thinking in my head that, Man, that's got to suck when aging has to suck when you oh, I, like... get, I, I got the premise. <laughs> I got the premise. It was good. All right, let's continue. It was just missing a punchline. That's all, Bo. Yeah, no, there was yeah, no. Yeah, may, there may, was... maybe I should have. Maybe I should have referenced saying he was going from having the hottest women in the day shave his face on TV to now doing a commercial for something only old people really use. What, what was the commercial for? The commercial that I saw on TV. Yeah, for Joe. It was. It was for a life insurance. Life insurance. Okay. I guess old yeah. people don't shave so, anymore. So, huh? And so, dentures, so right, Bo? How about something like along the lines of like, it really sucks when you get old. I see him doing commercials for life insurance. In 1969, he was good getting so much action. He should have taken out cock insurance. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That's something good, like that. Maybe I, I need I to use that one. That four second. In fact, the, now that I think about it, the world's worst comedian, Davey Mack, and look at my two YouTube sets. The world's worst comedian, Davy Beck. You and I, we could probably do something together. <laughs> oh, we have, yeah, we Davey, have a very sure. similar uh, vibe, which is not really care much about the material <laughs> and uh, have a pop culture reference and then just scream out obscenities towards the end of the punchline. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, we, we, we're, we're, we're similar. I'm not saying you're a ripoff. I'm saying you and I, we're comedy cousins. I love it, Bo. You, you and I, me and you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go, Robert. Of course, today happens to be 9-11, and we can never forget. I mean, I remember how scary it was when I was seeing the, the smoke from the towers not far from where I was living at the time at Woodside. Well, I wish they would say the same thing about my house keys, where I, where I left them. I forgot, I forgot. I forgot the line. Hey, Jim. At that no. point, when he when he went off on the bit of a tangent about 9-11, Andrea and I looked at each other and thought, oh, God, this is the Rain Man roulette moment we've been waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> this, as soon as I heard 9-11, beads of sweat started to drip on my fucking head, for Christ's sakes. And I've had Gil Brandt on this show nine times. Um, oh, I just yeah, that was uh, OK. Oh. I like that, though. Never forget 9-11. Always remember where you put your car keys. That makes sense. Yeah, right. it's very clever. All he right, just, good job, Bo. He if just you, needed to say the never forget line so everybody in the audience would know why he just mentioned 9-11 yeah. and went, I wish they would do that to my car keys. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, well, oh. So, yeah, you, you sort of did wish that terrorists would bomb the fucking car keys. 
you kind of made it sound like you wish 9-11 happened at your house, now that I think about it. <laughs> that you want Al-Qaeda <laughs> blowing up your home. You know what they yeah, say, maybe Dave. Maybe I forgot the never forget line in the thing. It still worked, Bo, but you know what they say, Dave. What? Jet fuel melts house keys. That, 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 it uh, certainly does. It's just a fine line between clever and stupid. <laughs> um, all right. This is very good, Bo. You guys did a wonderful job. You guys did a wonderful job. That was the line of the night. <laughs> you guys did a wonderful job. Wait, wait. Is this your 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 closing? And you're giving them credit? Yeah, exactly. I'm job. giving credit to the audience. You're giving credit hey, to the you... audience by telling them you did a wonderful job. You sound like Chris Mad Dog Russo, who, <laughs> who says that everyone does a good job. He did a great job. Let me tell you something, Mike. That guy does a great job over here. And, uh, you know, my wife, Jeannie, gave me a Christmas sweater one time. Uh, it was beautiful with the little Santa Claus and the reindeers. I tell you, Jeannie did a great job. She did a great job with that sweater. And then I had my kid, they, uh, they uh, sold me uh, uh, some stocks for my birthday. I said, great job, kid, great job, Bo. A great job, the audience did a great job, not sure what that means. But, but uh, is that it? Is that the set? That was pretty much it, day man. Yeah, well done, in and out, like a sniper, huh? <laughs> oh, how does it feel to be a goddamn new comedy star? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking uh you're gonna get booked all over Manhattan now. I'm um, I'm excited about it. I feel it's in, in the it's at the beginning of something that's going to become bigger over time. That's right. I love that attitude, Bo. Good for love yeah. It. It's a good positive attitude. Um, I see you wearing a Mets hat. Yep, that's right. To antagonize me? We're no, both Giants. Just... We're both Giants fans. Why wouldn't you come on the show wearing a Giants helmet? Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't own a football helmet aside from the, aside from the one that I have on display in a glass. Please work on that. And Next time you come on the show, don't wear a Mets hat because I'm a Yankees fan, but we both share Giants in common. So wear a goddamn Giants helmet and then you won't look as Steve Bartman-ish. All right, I'll, I'll, all right, I'll figure that out. All right, figure that out. Now, the, the, the one thing we're going to do is we're going to have a game and it's called Yankees versus Mets. Okay. And it's a trivia game. And the point of the game is based on the ending, the results of the game, we're going to discover which franchise is more superior once and for all. Because the Mets fans are doing a lot of clamoring right now. By the way, you guys have a game and a half lead over the Atlanta Braves. It's not like you have a fucking 30 game lead. I know the Yankees have shit the bed in the last month and a half, but they still have a five and a half game lead over the Rays with about 21, 22 games to go. The Mets, a game and a half over the Braves. Do I see the Mets choking? Yes, I do. Big time. Choking just like Bobo Chucks chokes on that big fucking puppet dick that he likes so much. The big puppet dick and little Davy. Now, Bo, you ready for this game? I'm ready for this game. All right. Robert. Question number one. What franchise has more Hall of Fame in inductees, Yankees or Mets? It would be the Yankees. Correct. For bonus points, can you tell me the numbers? The, num the numbers. Let's see. These are guys with the actual inducted as Yankees and as Mets, not just guys who played on both teams. Oh, let's see. Five, seven, two, 42, uh, 44, three. Am I missing one? Uh, I think it's part I'll of give it to you. You're not getting any bonus points. The Yankees have 27 Hall of Fame inductees who went in as Yankees, and the Mets have two inductees into the Hall of Fame. Number two, what franchise has more championships? The Yankees. That's right. Can you give me the numbers on that one? Uh, 27. 27 too. Isn't that interesting? The Hall of Fame numbers and the World Championship numbers are the same. Also, so far, the Yankees are winning this contest in terms of who are, who's the superior franchise. Am I right, Bo? Oh, yeah, so far. Okay, number three. 
What team had Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig on it? Uh, that would be the Yankees. That's the Yankees. So the Yankees have more Hall of Fame inductees. They have um, more championships, and they have you know two of the biggest players, the most uh, famous players of all time. <laughs> all right, so that's three. Um, Bubble. What according to Forbes magazine, what organization is worth more money? Yankees or Mets? Uh, I believe it was the Yankees, if I remember correctly. That's right, Bo. Uh, in fact, the Yankees, according to Forbes, are worth six billion dollars. The Mets come in two point six five. So the Yankees are worth more than twice the Mets are. What team did Daryl Strawberry have more championships with? He won more championships with the Yankees. Wait, uh, Daryl Strawberry, one of the most famous Mets, started his career with the Met, amazing New York Met. Daryl Strawberry. What team did he have more championships with? He, he, was, he, more, was, he was Mr. Met, for Christ's sakes. He won more championships with the Yankees, about three of them. You know what? You're right. Holy shit. One of the greatest players in Mets histories actually won three championships with the Yankees and just one with the Mets. So in other words, really, Daryl Strawberry's Yankee career is actually better than his Mets career. <laughs> now that I think about it, <laughs> a bunch of fucking losers your team is. <laughs> hey, here's another question, hot shot. What fucking bunch of losers got taken by Bertie Madoff's Ponzi scheme, Yankees or Mets? It was the previous owner of the Mets who I'm glad is gone, Steve. Yeah, Bert so what team got taken by Bernie Madoff and the Ponzi scheme? It, it was the Mets. The Mets, yeah. The Yankees would never get fucking conned like that. So, after we add up all the questions, Bobo, my final question to you is based on the data that we just went over right here on the Davy Mac Sports Program, what team is superior, Yankees or Mets? Mm, probably Yankees the and- Yankees. Now, Robert, I want you to make sure that you pull that clip and send it to all his little fucking Mets pals and his little fucking that subway uh, thing that, that makes all the T-shirts. And I want you to put that. I want you to send that to the new owner, Steve Cohen. And I want you to fucking tweet that out to Pete Alonzo immediately. Bobo just turned his back on the goddamn Mets and on the Davy Mac Sports Program live admitted that his favorite fucking team is inferior to the Yankees. He just admitted that the New York Yankees, the Bronx Bombers, winners of 27 championships, are superior to the New York Mets. He admitted that live on the air, and now he's drinking Jack and Cokes to try and fucking hide the pain of this memory. Bobo, comments? Uh, uh. Comments? Uh, Are there comments coming out? It's gonna be a tough, gonna be a tough ride to the to the ballpark on Saturday. Tough ride to the ballpark. Yeah. No. I, I, after Roy blows up your spot, persona non grata at City Field, my friend. Okay. Um, I just got a text from Jimmy. He said he's never gonna go to a Mets game with Bobo again. Bobo's a fake Mets fan. I knew it. I know it. Well, listen, if you're a Mets fan, you can't admit live on the DMSP that the Yankees are the superior team. And he did. He did that. Um, we have an issue here with Dwayne Haskins has gotten another person into trouble. Oh, this no. fucking Dwayne Haskins can't stop getting fucking asshole journalists and reporters and CS, serious XM personalities in trouble. This is amazing. So Dwayne Haskins, we went over. Um, two months ago, sadly, tragically, very tragically, okay, this is a 24-year-old man who uh, was an NFL quarterback and he was killed when he was walking on the side of the road. I guess his car had run out of gas or something and he was killed by a truck. He got hit by a truck. And it's a very sad story. Gil Brandt, rather than saying condolences, went out on Sirius XM and said that the guy was lazy, that he didn't have a good work ethic, also said that the guy uh, was a cheapskate because when he had a, uh, his draft party, he had it, held it at a bowling alley and charged people 20 bucks to attend. So he really fucking buried the, uh, this, this guy. Now there's a new writer, Chris Adamski. 
He's the latest to get in trouble because of Dwayne Haskins. Um, Robert, do you have this Chris Adamski tweet? Because it's since been deleted, but it was screen grabbed by a lot of people. Yeah, give one second, Dave. This, uh, this, this, this fucking, um, Dwayne Haskins is going to end everyone's career, including mine, probably. And here's what Chris Adamski had to say. Mason Rudolph ended last season as the QBT, two, two. He's talking about the Steelers. The only other QBs the Steeler had retired and died. Rudolph nonetheless begins the next season as the QB three. So he uh, very <laughs> flippantly said the Steelers are with two less quarterbacks this year because one retired and one died. One died. And just very coldly fucking saying that shit. Nonetheless. <laughs> I love that. I mean, what the shit is going on here? These guys won't leave Dwayne Haskins alone. Bobo, any thoughts about this fucking shit? Uh, this guy's probably going to... They're going to need security all over this guy every week now. Uh-oh. Who are you talking about? Chris Adamski? This uh, yeah. unknown journalist who we have no idea who he is? I mean, I'm not sure anyone yeah, 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 knows yeah, yeah, where he yeah. lives. He, I don't think he'll be allowed in any... Uh, any uh, NFL stadium mm. after this. Oh, all right. Listen, I got to tell you something. Yeah. I, I think this is an odd, uh, an odd development that's going on right now with Dwayne Haskins. I would advise people just simply not fucking talking about Dwayne Haskins. Ask how Gil Brandt made out. Didn't he get fired from Sirius XM, Robert? I, I don't know. Did he get fired, Dave, man? I think he got fired. And I think there's only one place that Gilbrand can appear now. Where where would that be? Compound Media? <laughs> <laughs> no. On this show, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Like, the goddamn... Let me just... Hey, it's Gilbrand here. gonna stall until we get changed over to black and white but let me tell you something this fucking good Dwayne Haskins this motherfucker I tell you he's getting fucking journalists fired stronger than a fucking goddamn do you ever I'll tell you the one thing about Dwayne Haskins is you know you're gonna have a party don't, don't, don't have it at the goddamn fucking bowling alley you charge 20 people for it you know you have it at your house for Christ's sakes, and you pass out red cups and you charge people five dollars for a solo cup. That's the way white people do it. We don't we don't fucking run out a goddamn bowling alley and fucking charge twenty-five dollars a head to our friends and family. We act like fucking assholes, we buy the red solo cups, and then we fucking charge them five bucks at the door. You say, hey, you can drink until the goddamn tap is fucking. I'll tell you this all about Dwayne Haskins too. I, you know, I'm surprised it was a fucking bowling alley and not Chick-fil-A. You know, with, 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 with how, how goddamn fucking, you know. And look at the goddamn bow. Look at fucking bow. You know, you know, bows with, you know, with, 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 with the jokes and the same, you know, he's going to shit for a UPS and whatnot. You know, Bumble, let me ask you a question. What are your opinions about Dwayne Haskins? Should he have a fucking uh, goddamn thing in a bowling alley? Should he have had a party at a bowling alley? I mean, he's dead now. I mean, we can talk about him. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to have a party at a bowling alley when there's a, probably a lot of drinking going on. Uh, uh, front of, depending who we get invited. May, maybe a little bit problematic when you got heavy objects like that while someone's drinking. I know you had Dwayne Haskins bowled the way he threw passes. The fucking bowling ball was flying all over the goddamn bowling alley. You know, the guy had no accuracy as a QB. He's got no fucking accuracy as a bowler. I yeah, saw I think, I think all Haskins. the guests got a uh, got concussions that party. I saw they, Dwayne Haskins. He was on lane 14. He tried to throw the goddamn bowler, and the ball went to lane 15. For Christ's sakes, just like he throws the goddamn pigskin. You never know where the fucking ball is gonna go. I once saw Dwayne Haskins throw a fucking interception in a fucking 7-Eleven. I'm like, how the hell is that even impossible? He was throwing his fucking uh, chips to his kid. And the fucking guy picked them off. And that's all the fucking guy does. 
Oh, it saw Dwayne Haskins at the bowling alley. He's bowling the fucking ball. The ball went behind him and went into the fucking Frogger machine. The goddamn arcade machine by his head. He's less accurate than any motherfucker of all time. Hey, here's Bo making all the fucking Joe Namath jokes. I mean, me, 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 you know, he, he's allowed to go after the goddamn that quarterback, but Gil Brandt can't go, you know, take on this uh, spoiled, entitled brat. You know, here's, here's the one thing about Dwayne Haskins that I liked. I liked Dwayne Haskins, his legs, you know, his scrambling ability, but too bad he couldn't win, run away from a Mack truck on the side of a road. I mean, let's be honest, if Dwayne Haskins could have scrambled away from that truck the way it was third and seven, picking up a fucking first down, maybe he'd still be with us today and he'd be QB3 of Pittsburgh Steelers and he'd still be having parties at the bowling alley. Yeah, but it's not, you know, he's, 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 he's on the side of the road there. He looks like the guy at the end of Naked Gun. You know, he's just flat because he's been rolled over by a fucking steamroller and a marching band. Well, I'm not trying to throw any fun. Dwayne Haskins seemed like a nice guy, except he had no work ethic. He was cheap. He was stupid. He was a moron. And, and, and apparently, he's one of the worst hitchhikers on the planet Earth. I mean, I don't know what he was trying to do, but, you know, I've seen all, all fucking goddamn movies, you know, back in my day. You know, you get on the side of the road, you do this with your thumb, you have a fucking little stick with a handkerchief, but you don't go out in the middle of the road to hitchhike. I mean, what is this? I know what you did last summer where people are jump going out of the middle of the goddamn road and fucking jumping on the cars. I mean, maybe if Dwayne Haskins was a little bit you know, less lazy with the, with, the, with the fucking hitchhiking, you know, a little bit more proactive, he'd still be playing a goddamn NFL and still be having parties at the bowling alley. Well, I, 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 you know, this is, I'm, I'm serious XM's Gil Brandt. Fuck you, America. <laughs> oh. Drool is also a nice touch, David. What drool? I have no idea what you're talking about. This is an audio only <laughs> podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where did Bobo um, go? Uh oh. We need him to come back because he's fucking everything. Bo! What happened I to guess, Bo? I guess he didn't like your Gil Brandt uh, impersonation, <laughs> David. <laughs> That's and I know he was drinking. He started drinking out of something else. He stopped drinking from the Anthony Mason cup. And then he moved on to like some sort of, uh, I don't know, Scotty Pippen bowl or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Yeah. What is, when is this uh, began that he's, he did, he was always a, a beer drinker, but a, a kind of a generic, you know, Sierra Nevada. That's like a yeah. kind of a bow brand. And I'm like, Oh, that's a nice thing. He's got like a nice little brand. And a nice little beer for himself. Now he's doing Jack and Cokes out of the goddamn Anthony Mason jar. Well, you know, when you hang out with Stevie Lou, <laughs> things get twisted. I know. Yeah. Hanging out, hanging out with Stevie Lou is like being in the third chapter of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas at all times. Yeah. <laughs> you never, you're always like, Bo, you're back. Bo, we can't hear you. You, you gotta unmute, Bo. Unmute, <laughs> Bowie. We thought you had a, a congestive heart failure like Anthony Mason. Yeah, you guys got to just click on the microphone. They're, they're, they're both drunk and high, Robert. This is the problem. There he is. He's back. Yeah, we, we just had some technical difficulties. On my Don't end. worry. You've had such an incredibly successful and triumphant appearance. Your stand-up debut is going to go down as one of the great debuts in comedy history. Fuck Chris Rock. Fuck Robin Williams. Okay, Carlin, Pryor, fucking fuck, right? Seinfeld, Rodney Dangerfield, fuck. See what I'm saying? Yep, I see what you're saying. You, you, you know, you, it's all about Daniel Bow now. Yep, exactly. All right, listen, we got to thank you for being on the show tonight. You have brought the fire and the passion and the thunder. Thank you for coming live. Well, well Dave, real Stevie quick. Bo wasn't the only comedian this week on the show, was he? I, I heard yeah, a rumor. Yeah, no, I heard a rumor. Got, somebody. Of course, you got Robert, who's, uh, who's here. I'm oh, here. So, Dave, Dave uh, 
Robert uh, did a set as well. So did Luby and uh, Stevie. Yeah, but I, I believe, I, I believe because I know show business that Robert's trying to set me up. Yeah, I think I'm talking about something much bigger than, <laughs> than that. Unfortunately, <laughs> somebody got to do something perhaps huge that they didn't plan on. I was the, I was going to end the show. Okay. Well, I'll brag about myself. I was at we we, we did my radio station uh, of which I am number one in the morning in the great state of New Jersey, the morning rat race with Carl and Dave, WRAT 95.9 FM. Number one, we got our spring book, our summer book, number fucking one. And we'd have a big rat fest. We've had Smashing Pumpkins and Rob Zombie and Alice in Chains and all this kind of thing. And this year it was shine down. And we hadn't had a rat fest because of the COVID and the lockdown and this and that for three years. So it was the first rat fest since 2019. It'd be ironic if it was rats that kept you from having the rat fest. (laughs) (laughs) 15 uh, or three years, 15,000 people. And they said, hey, we need a little bit of time. We need a little bit of time, Davey Mac. Can you get up there? Can you do a a set, a a bow type of a, a, a set really quick? Get up there on the mic. In front of 15,000 people, I go, I'm your fucking man, dog. And I got to be honest, I don't remember anything. Because I had like nine IPAs, just very much like Bo. I do, and I barely drink anymore. Yeah, I like the pot. But it was Rat Fest, and I was going to have an IPA. And next thing you know, and look at this, Roy. Look at that. That's me on stage. And just in case you want to actually see the crowd, Robert, go now to the, the, the crowd shot. There, look at that, Roy. That's oh, the yeah, same that's shot. That's the PNC man. Bank Art Center. That's the 15,000 people that were literally on their feet chanting Dave Man. Dave Love man, it. Dave Man. Amazing, David. Chanting. Screaming. Dave Man. Dave Man. Dave Man. Dave Man. Dave Man. Dave Man. Bo, thanks for the chanting, pal. I really appreciate it. No, no. Just like your fucking bullshit tweets. You always add on. You, 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 you got to be in there for the original goddamn chant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he can always take steam out of my rants by just not saying anything back and just going, yeah. all right, I see your point. So you're, you're, <laughs> you're smart like that. Other people just keep me going and going and going. Um, okay. Look, it's been a great show. I, I, I feel like we literally just saw the fucking beginning of a goddamn comedy superstar. And yes, I heard, by the way, that Stevie and Robert and all kinds of comedy superstars were at the event and were excellent as well. I did hear these things, mostly from a fucking smoked up Roy Hara, a fucking smoky, dokey, bopey, mopey, dopey Roy Hara. Roy, how come you didn't go? You should go up there with your keyboard and do a little fucking keyboard act. I didn't need to, man. Bubba on the show. I couldn't top that. One day, me and you are going to do a stupid keyboard comedy act. With you Rob. and I, we'll, yeah. we'll go up there. I got, I got bigger things planned for you and I, David. Don't you worry, man. Really? Yeah, I'm working on something. Don't worry. After not- you saw that picture of 15,000 strong just fucking going losing their shit for the Dave man in the great state of New Jersey. Is yeah. that what it, what, what did it for you? Yeah. Yeah. I got, yeah. Some, I got something to ruin, David. Don't worry. I'm not ready I- to unleash it just yet, but uh, something in the works. I do want to say, um, for the 11th year in a row, I uh, have been shut out for the New Jersey Hall of Fame fucking nominations this year. So those fucking pieces of shit, they obviously want to ignore the fact that I'm the number one radio host in New Jersey and have been for eight years, but everything just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The ratings keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until we're just going to put the competition out of business. But in, in addition to that, I am Mr. New Jersey. People, that's what they call me. I go out to fucking Dunkin' Donuts. They go, Mr. New Jersey, what would you like today? Cinnamon? Something like that. I go, you got it. In fucking the New Jersey Hall of Fame. Not even nominated? Bullshit. We'll get you in there, Dave. Don't you worry. Hey, what's that chicken wing story you had to tell me? The chicken bone story. Should I, uh, oh, my God. That? Okay. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to get out of here, but I'll, I'll tell it to you quickly. I was, I'm the, I've brought this up before on the show. I'm the, um, the apartment residence freak. I'm the beau yeah. of <laughs> my apartment complex. Oh yeah. I'm the, I'm the fucking weirdo who no one wants anything to do with. 
and everyone is pretty much creeped out and disturbed by. I know this for a fact because I've asked my nice neighbor, Linda, what people feel about me. And they go, and she goes, well, they hear you screaming all the time in your apartment. And so people <laughs> are scared and they, 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 they are concerned sometimes. And I've actually had to convince them not to call the police on you. I say he's in the media. He does broadcasts in the media. That's what Linda said about me. <laughs> this is a new one. I was just accused of putting chicken bone. I can't say it too loudly because they're probably listening. I was accused of putting chicken bones in my neighbor's mailbox. Oh, David, that's a voodoo. Uh, that's a voodoo uh, ceremony. Okay. Chicken bones in the mailbox. <laughs> yeah. I, I, here's the type of chicken, first of all, that the Dave man only comes in conduct, uh, contact with. McDonald's chicken McNuggets and Wendy's chicken sandwich. And both, neither have oh, bones. Oh, oh, okay, unless you're finding fucking rappers. I'm not Mr. Voodoo. Last time I checked, I look like an Irish Catholic guy <laughs> and not fucking Papa Shango. Okay, so I'm not the one who's gonna be doing the bone. But she goes like this, and she's probably listening. She goes like this, she goes, who put the chicken bones in my mailbox? I go, I don't know. It wasn't me. Because what happened was she's been leaving her lawn chair outside in the fucking lawn and all these, and, and they don't like us leaving shit outside on the lawn. It doesn't bother me. The lawn is as big as a fucking football field. I can walk well, around the goddamn chair. I would, start, other, I would start with the Haitian residents to see. That's my first call right holy there. Holy shit. I mean, you're sounding like Gil Brandt over there, Roy. <laughs> yeah, just say it. Bo. You have anything to do with this? Would you know uh, about this? Has anyone ever put chicken bones in your mailbox? Nope. I don't know anyone that practices voodoo. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the thing. I ain't the fucking guy in Temple of Doom ripping people's hearts out of their chests and doing all kind of voodoo with red and black paint on my face. I'm Davy Mac. I, 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 as long as people don't bother me, they can literally do whatever the fuck they want. They can have sexual intercourse with them with each other on the goddamn lawn. Forget about lawn chair. I don't care about lawn chair. As long as no one calls the cops on me. That's kind of my thing. Because I have little meltdowns at 3.30 in the morning where I start screaming. And I'll be honest, it's usually about Bo and the mistreatment that he's done to me. I, I don't know, Dave. You've always said Roy's your best friend. He seems to know an awful lot about voodoo. <laughs> you have anything to do with this? Are you trying to set me up to get evicted? And you're, you're, you're putting chicken bones in my neighbor's mailboxes in, in, in sure order that the heat falls on me? I assure you I'm clean on this one. All right. Listen, it's been an explosive interview. It's been an unlight enlightening interview. It's been an entertaining interview. And I, uh, uh, and I will say this, Bo. It's been one of the greatest interviews I've ever... Uh, conducted with a special guest star of the Davy Mac sports program. You were on fire tonight. Your stand-up comedy, better than ever. I predict you will have a comedy special with Bob Nelson on the HBO comedy out half hour uh, within the next year. Wow. Yeah. A lot of compliments, and he enjoys giving me dead air in return, which I always find interesting. I'm, I'm I, no, no, no. Here, here's the thing, pal. Here's the thing, pal. When someone just waxes poetic for 60 seconds straight, you don't think you, you don't think of just giving them a little thank you. Uh, uh, thank, thank, thank you, Dave. Too goddamn you. late, add on. Too goddamn late. Just like with the Twitter and just like with the chanting. You gotta be there in the fucking moment, add on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that you were there. That time you were there. The little okay. Bobo, I love you so much. Thank you for doing the program tonight. I do appreciate it. I appreciate you. Your career is going very, very well. The stand-up comedy uh, is going well. Are you still doing your podcast, Best Seats in the House? Yep. We still do our we still do our podcast. Me and my friend Robert Kramer on it. We're, we up we had we upload our new episodes every Thursday. Usually sometime they show they're 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 uploaded around in the morning on Thursday. All right. Well, there you go. Best seats in the house. Make sure you're listening to Bobo's podcast and check out his YouTube clips. Uh, Stevie, thank you for setting up Bo uh, Bobo at Stevie Lou Studios. Appreciate that. Thanks, Dave, man. Um, Roy Harder, you're the best. I love thank the you, Don David. Johnson uh, outfit. It's fantastic. Yeah, and I, I got a pie case just gig coming up in New York City. Uh, booze Cruise, uh, Saturday, September 24th, if anyone's interested in going. 
Boom. I love that. Saturday, September 24th, you say? Yes. You are invited to, Dave. Of course. Uh, listen, I've been on the Pie Tasters booze cruises before. They're the most insane fun you'll ever have. Just make sure you stay de- uh, stay stay hydrated because you will drink so much. And because of the boat and the rock and roll, like I've never been more destroyed than at the end of a fucking Pie Tasters booze cruise. I will be honest <laughs> with you. Robert O. Any uh, final plugs before we get out of here? Yeah, this Thursday, the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. I'm there with Earl David Reed as the headliner. Leonard Free is the other co-feature. It's a fundraiser for Team Jan, which is like a Children's Miracle Network thing. So if you're in that area and want to come see a fun show, head out. I love it. All right, well, listen, gentlemen, that'll do it. Thank you all so much. Roy Harder, Robert, Stevie, Daniel, Bobo, Curlin. I'm Davey Mack. Thanks for watching and listening. Good night, everybody.